It's time for a Bears Now mailbag. I am Harrison Graham from Chat Sports. Ricky Bobby kicking things off. He said, would you rather take Joe Alt at number nine if he's there and the wide receivers are gone or trade down for an edge? I would say this, Ricky Bobby. God, what a great movie. Um, it, it depends what trade offers I'm getting. I like the idea of Alt at nine if he falls there and the receivers are gone. Um because I think Joe Wall is a top six or seven player in this draft, and if he falls to nine, the value is great, and it's still, you know, it's not a top need, but it certainly is an upgrade over what you currently have. Uh, I would certainly uh, be open to that, but I'd also be open to trading down to the mid-teens, getting a Jared Verse or Latu Latu, someone like that, and picking up more capital. So why don't you guys answer this for me? Fill in the blank. The Bears will draft blank at number nine. Who's it going to be? Go ahead and let us know, and you could say trade down for a name as well, but let us know what's going to happen with that pick. All right, Jaron Thomas, hashtag Bears. Chicago would absolutely win the NFL draft if polls came away with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams. I mean, it, it's hard to argue, right? Now, you don't know how things are going to play out, but just in terms of, like, in the moment, raw reaction, they would be massive winners if they pulled that off because you're talking about two guys – that people project as high, high-level players in this league for a team that's already ascending and many believe has playoff aspirations this year. You get Caleb, you get him another top-notch weapon in Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah, they, they'd they be big winners on night one. Scott Wadja, how many Super Bowls will the Bears be in during Caleb's rookie contract? I would love one. <laughs> like, hey, let's get to the playoffs first. Um, but... I'll say this, Scott, if he's if he's a top 10 quarterback in this league at some point during his rookie contract, they have a shot to get there because the NFC is pretty manageable and it should be for the next few years. And, you know, I know everybody says San Francisco, well, what's going to happen when they have to pay Brock Purdy $50 million per year? Doesn't mean they're not still going to be good, but they're going to lose a couple of their key guys once that happens. So um, they're entering this window with a quarterback on a rookie deal kind of at a good time. If Dallas is in a place where their future is uncertain, Detroit and Green Bay are going to be tough within the division, but it's kind of wide open otherwise. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to say, like, oh, they're going to get there three times in five years, but, like, getting there is, is – is, you can see the vision. You can see it being a possibility if he does end up being that guy. Rob Wadarski, do you think the Bears will draft Rice in the third round? Brendan Rice, Caleb's teammate. I, I Not at 75. That's too high for me. He's not a top 75 player in this. I don't think. I think he's somewhere between 90 and 115. Like, I think it's late third, early mid fourth. Like, if he's at 122, I love that value, but I think 75 is too early. I just, I think you can get better players there. I get it. The whole, well, he's already got chemistry and this and that. Like, he should be, if, like, if it's him or, like, if Xavier Leggett is there or Ricky Pearsall or someone like that, like, those guys are, are just better players than Brendan Rice. So, uh, and I'll even add this, too. And this isn't a I don't like Brendan Rice segment, but it's I like Taj Washington at 122 more than I like Brendan Rice at 75. If you want to go like the teammate route, I think Washington at 122 is better value than Rice at 75. No, Sammy. Personally, I don't think the edge options in this draft are elite. What if it's Bowers at nine? What would your reaction be? I'd still like it. Um, it probably wouldn't be what I would do, but there's almost nothing they could do at nine where I would just be like, this is a joke. Like, I can't stand this. Like, I'm trying to even think about what that would be. Like, I don't know if they took a corner or something when they clearly don't need a corner, and they're not going to do that because they've hardly even visited with any corners. The guys they've had have been, like, later draft picks. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything that would upset me. Now, if, like, it's brought Bowers and Roma Dunze both available and they took Bowers, I'd find that a little odd. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't be upset either because he's a hell of a player and he helps your rookie quarterback and he helps your offense, so I'd be okay with it. Subscribe now. Don't miss out on any Bears news, rumors, or updates as we're just days away from the NFL draft. Uh, it's going to be a hectic week, and uh, this is the time to subscribe and turn on notifications, so be sure to do that. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thumbs up, Kevin. Drafting a running back at nine would upset me. Well, sure, yes, that would upset me. That's also not really realistic. Like, Again, I was answering that question in the realm of 
among realistic outcomes, what would legitimately upset me? I guess if Joe Walt was there and they took like, uh, how about this? If they took fas Fashionu over Alt, I would be a little bothered because I do think Alt's the better player. It, it wouldn't be a bad pick because I think Fashionu is good as well. But if you had access to both and you took Fashionu, I, I think that would be a mistake. Um, but maybe some teams have Fashionu higher. Who knows? All right, we got more questions and super chats to get to, but we also have to tell you about a word from our sponsor, Prize Picks. Daily Fantasy made it easy. Uh, pick two plus players, two to six players uh, for any sport, crossover sports, NBA, NHL, MLB underway now. You got um, NFL season long projections that have already dropped on the app. Go look at those, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get a deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less, cash out. It's that easy, and uh, the lineup changes every day. You can mix it up. Nikola Jokic, uh, this is an entry I did recently. Uh, they've got that Monday game. You can pair that. It's half a point. You take the more with a combination of other picks. Depending on when you're watching this, maybe that first Philly game has already gone down. I took Tobias Harris less than 13.5 points. Uh, Tyrese Maxey more than 17.5. Uh, that stat projection lowered by price picks with a goblin pick here. So a little less of a payout. Three-player entries, standard ones usually pay out five extra money. This is like 4X, but easier to hit with that lower uh, points total for Tyrese Maxey. It's about 10 to win 40 here. Hopefully I win. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. Another cool thing about the app, you can go look at celebrity picks and what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You've got Meek Mill. You've got Andrew Schultz and other celebrities playing prize picks all the time. Get started today. Link is in the comments and in the description. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. The code CLNS, again, get you a deposit match up to $100. Ah, yes, the former head coach. Matt Nagy says, do you trust Poles to draft a receiver after the second round? Like, to hit on one? I mean, obviously that hasn't been a great area of his, right? Like, he's done a lot of really good things, but Bayless Jones in the third, miss. It would take something drastic for that to change. Um, I I'm still holding the jury out for Tyler Scott. It's been one year. We, I think we saw more flashes out of him as a rookie than Bayless Jones. I'm not going to sit here and say it was a lot. Uh, but I still think he can at least be a contributor. And you got him in the fourth. It, 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 if a fourth-round pick turns into a fairly consistent contributor on offense and special teams, I'm okay with that. The Bayless pick was certainly a miss. And, yeah, it's a valid question, which is part of the reason why I've been so strong and adamant about getting that receiver in the first round because your hit rate just has a chance of being higher there. Got Robert. If Luce is fired midseason, would the Bears offer Shane Waldron the job? Let me just say this. I don't think there's any scenario outside of a scandal where the Bears just didn't have a choice where they would fire Fluce midseason. I think when they decide to keep him after last year, knowing that they're going to draft a new quarterback and kind of reset at that position, that, that was kind of a message like, hey, we believe in what you're building. You're our guy. So – it would have to take a disaster for him to get fired after this upcoming year, much less in season. I would be stunned if he got fired midseason. I guess if they start like 0 and 10, he could get fired midseason. But do any of us think that's going to happen? I mean, say what you want. The team finished 7 and 6 over their final 13 last year. Like, I don't think they're going to be like a bottom three football team. Alex Amerling calling it now. We will take Byron Murphy, screams, Eberflus, three attack. I'd be cool with it. I like Byron Murphy a lot. I know he doesn't check the box of some of the measurables the Bears look for. His arms are a little shorter. He's under 6'1", but, man, you throw on the tape, and you you got to think Matt Eberflus has cracked some smiles watching that kid work. I mean, his pass rush win rate is off the charts. He's quick. He's strong as hell for his size. I mean, if he hits in the NFL, it's, uh, he could be Aaron Donald light. Now, again, I emphasize light. Like, he's not going to become full-blown Aaron Donald. That guy's one of the best players of all time, but – if he's 75% of Aaron Donald and the athletic comps and the tape coming out of college is similar, I mean, if he's 75%, that's a pro bowler. Like, I, he could be really, really good there. Yo, X. This is a random – I don't know why that made me chuckle. This is a random question, but uh, what former team from Chicago Bears would be this year's team? I'd say 2005. Uh, where do we fall in the division? It's a good question. I'm trying to think. Maybe some of those like early, like those early 2010s Cutler 
team, like the NFC Championship team that had a nice run and lost the NFC Championship. I don't think they're going to make it that far, but in terms of like Calvert Town, maybe that level. Um, you know, 2018 is an interesting. It's obviously a differently built team, but and I don't think this defense is that defense, but I think it could be 85 to 90 percent of that defense, and I think the offense could be better. So maybe they're in that range of caliber team where. You know, if they make the playoffs, people think they could go on a run. Obviously, we know what happened uh, with the double doink, but it's hard to f compare it to a former team. Um, I'd have to do some deeper research and just a trip down memory lane to kind of find that. Michael Zaprinsky, under seven wins, get flu fired this year. It's possible, yeah. I mean, look, you would like going backwards in wins from last year would not be a great look, right? Especially like you made the decision to change quarterbacks. Um, instead of trading down for the hall, like if like it, it would not be ideal if Caleb really struggled and this team went backwards. If the defense went backwards, especially Michael, I could see that then happening because it's like I think a big reason they kept him because was how much the defense improved and his hand in that. So yeah, I mean, look, if this team's five and twelve, six and eleven, I definitely think firing Matt Eberflus discussions are going to be had, but. Uh, I also would be surprised if they won less than seven games considering the roster. And uh, quite frankly, the schedule is not murderer's row. Fresh out the box. What's more important, wide receiver or O-line? I would lean O-line, but that doesn't mean they should take O-line over receiver. Like, I think between offensive line, edge, defensive tackle, and wide receiver, they should take BPA. I think those are all premium positions and players they need to add talent at. And I think among those position groups, the top three receivers stand out the most to me. I, I really do think that. Like, if I'm ranking those four position groups, just individual prospects, I'd go Marvin Harrison Jr. one, Malik Neighbors two, uh, Roma Dunes a three, Joe Alt four, maybe one of the other offensive tackles, and then I would probably go Byron Murphy back to an offensive tackle, and then you get to maybe one of the edges. So the point is, if it's like, if it's Roma Dunes a or Olu Fashionu, I'm taking Roma Dunze. Now, if you want to trade down for Fashionu and get more picks, okay, go for it. But if the trade's not there, like, I'm taking the best player available among those four position groups. DC Viper, if Caleb struggles, do you keep the staff or do we restart all over again? Um, I mean, again, like, I, I don't want to blow up the staff after this year and go into that same cycle they've done. Justin Fields, after his rookie year, they fire the whole staff, and he has to start new with the new staff. Like I, I'd rather avoid that. So that's why, again, it would have to be catastrophic for them to reset the coaching staff. Last one here from Joe Sports Fan. Can we talk Caitlin Clark to date, or get Caitlin Clark to date Cole Komet so we can get the same uh, Taylor Swift, the same rub, same love that Taylor Swift brought the Chiefs? Um Look, I love Caitlin Clark. I don't think she gets usually going to get quite that much attention that Taylor Swift got. I think people still underestimate like how po like Taylor Swift might be the most popular person on the planet. <laughs> like seriously. So, um, also, I think Cole Komet has a girlfriend. I'm not sure, but hey, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Caitlin Clark, if you're uh, if you're watching, uh, if you know if if Cole's interested, uh, maybe that can happen. Who knows? Yo X actually gets the final word of a super chat. What are your top three dark horse teams this season? I wouldn't even say the Bears because I think a lot of people are like buying into the Bears as a trendy good team. Oh man, dark horse teams You're putting me on the spot here. Let me just pull up NFL standings here. No, I don't think the Vikings are a dark horse. I'm not buying them. Uh, I will go. Yeah, Falcons maybe. Does that do they qualify as dark horse? Trace. Um, no one's really standing out to me. Looking at what about this. Jacksonville slash Indianapolis? Colts are a wild card because what is Anthony Richardson going to be? I feel like they could either go backwards with when they went nine and eight with Gardner Mitchell last year, or maybe like if he's like what they think he can be. Maybe they go win like 11, 12 games. Who knows? Um, I just – who's the quarterback? I, I don't think Minshew in that division. Um, maybe Washington, if they have a great draft. They have a ton of picks. Like if May is the real deal or if Daniels is the real deal, if they get him. Um, Seattle, maybe. I'll throw one at you. 
I think Arizona sneaky could be like a wild card contender. Like if they get Marvin Harrison Jr. at four, they have a bunch of other picks. Um, I know, especially producer Trace here. We love to make Ky fun of Kyler Murray on this phone. Producer Trace picked him off in seven on seven in high school. True story. Go follow Trace on Twitter at Trace Gerard fifty eight. But uh, if they get Marv, I mean, I could see them at least being better. They played better down the stretch last year, but. I don't know. On the spot, only a couple teams really stand out, and I think the Bears are too trendy for that. So, I don't know. I'd have to think about it more. I like that Colts call from Trace. I think that's an interesting one. All right, will the Bears make the playoffs in 2024? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Get your votes in in the comments, and uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram. We tried to get as many questions as we could. If you have any more, hit me up over there. i got to catch up on some DMs, so if you've hit me up, I'll get back to you. It's been a busy couple of weeks, but uh, we will get those answered at HGRAM NFL. Stay tuned. Draft just around the corner.